Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram. All links um, for, for things that I'm using in this video will be linked in the description box below. So if you will just click that see more um, wording here or the expandable arrow, down arrow here, that will, that's down below me of course that will expand that description box and i have all kinds of links our shop scrapbookingwithme.com is linked there um if you want to know about the pilot family ministries that's linked down there um my buy me a coffee um link supporting link is down there and then i try to um give you links to all the products that i use now sometimes i forget something that i've used in the video after i start editing it and that's when I add things to the description boxes when I'm editing, not during the video. So sometimes I'll forget something. If I do, please just go ahead and leave me a comment and I will try my best to get that linked for you if you are looking for something in particular that I've used in the video. Today I am working on, or actually this week, I am working on uh, projects, little items to go in my junk journals. Um, I have a journal that I'm working on right now that, um, I would like to have a couple of little coin pouches, um, ephemera pockets that are a little unique to go in them. So I have this expandable, I have them, well, I've made it out of paper and I've made it out of cardstock. I kind of like it more out of the cardstock than the paper, but either way is um, great and it will work. If you're looking for something really lightweight and thinner, then of course use paper. Um, if you're looking for something a little more sturdy or standalone um, that you could use outside of your journal also, then of course use cardstock. All right, so we have a little eyelet there with a circle, and that is um, put on just this top flap with my crocodile, and I have the string wrapped around and knotted behind that, and then you just twist it around a couple of times, and then go back around your little circle there, and then you've got your closure. So that's how we are doing the closure. And these are double flap. So here's your double flap element that I was talking about in the title description of this video. And you have an expandable pocket here. I just have a couple of little tags, but there's your expandable pocket. Hope everybody can see that. Move that string so you can see that expansion there. Cute, huh? These are not my original idea. There are plenty of tutorials on YouTube about these, um, but I was needing them for my journal, and y'all know me. I'm going to show you what I'm making, and whether that's been done before on YouTube or whether it's a brand new idea that I've come up with, I'm just showing you what I'm making this week. So here's what I was making today. And it's a double flap, so it's got that expandable pocket there. This bottom flap has a little pocket here hidden underneath it. Um, you could tell that there's something there, but once you pull up that flap, then you see that pocket there with the little notch in it. Well, it goes in quite easily. There we go. Okay, so there is our double flap coin pockets or ephemera pockets expandable ephemera pockets okay and then i find when you are um, just doing the one eyelet and not doing another like a policy closure not doing another one here and wrapping it and doing the figure eight i find that it's easier and prettier if you will go knot it at the top and then go back around one side and then back around the other side and then come back up in the middle of that and then come around and it's usually very easy <laughs> then come around and then you've got your um, sections of that string all worked out and I keep it on the spool until I wrap it around as many times as I want it wrapped around 
then see, oh yeah, I like that, and then I clip it off. So that's how I did that one. This one exactly the same way. I just cut this one a little bit shorter than that one. Um, I used some baker's twine that has some gold um, flick in it, and it's a double pocket also. Now see, when I did my eyelet on this one, it waved up that paper quite a bit because we are just working with paper on this one instead of cardstock like this one. So it waved up that paper quite a bit when I set the eyelet, but I mean, I kind of like the waviness of it. I even sat and kind of crumpled up that just to make it even more, <laughs> just because I like grungy. All right, so then we've got, and this is some uh, pattern paper that I had from eons and eons and eons ago, and I am not the biggest fan of it. This was my first prototype just to try to uh, make sure that I was doing it correctly. And the floral on the inside of this is kind of hideous to me. <laughs> so that's why I've covered it up uh, with a lot of stuff to try to hide that. Now, if you love that, I don't, I don't want to knock it at all for you, um, but it's just not my cup of tea so that's why I tried to cover up most of it so you've got your expandable pocket there in your double flap and I covered it up with some dictionary page then you've got your pocket on the outside here with just a little couple of little bits and bobs in there got a little um, flower I haven't used these kind of flowers in such a long time and I thought that that went really well with that paper Put some dictionary page there, a little fussy cut die cut from um, Betty's um, Custom Design on Etsy. And then um, did that little flower with some, uh, that's a, an um, uh, enamel dot that I put on in the middle of it. So this one, I just had it so that it wraps around, it just goes around once and then comes back up and then you're back around that circle again. And there's that one. Okay, so I will put these tags off to the side and use them in the next one that we make. Um, I have a journal that I'm working on that's a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I wanted to try it just because it's got a lot of pinks in it. And I'm not that big of a pink fan, but I wanted to do uh, one with roses. And so <laughs> uh, the roses that I chose in the main patterns in the journal uh, have a lot of pink in them. Uh, it's like a rosy red pink, and that would go really well with that. And then I'll have this one for my stash. But I will show you how to make um, one with just paper, and then I will show you another one out of this cardstock. And this cardstock also is directional. So if you're thinking, oh, I don't have any paper that's not directional, I can't make these. Yes, you can. This is directional paper, but I will show you how to cover up the uh, upside down, because the, the words on the back of this paper, when I flipped them, it was upside down here and it was upside down here. So I will show you how I covered that up. And also on the inside, it was upside down. So I put a little piece in there. And you can't even tell unless you pull this out and then you can see down in there where that directional paper was and see that heart that's in there is even upside down. But just to the naked eye, human eye looking straight on, you can't even tell. So I will show you how to get that um, directional paper covered up and making one also. Okay, so you want to start with 12 by 12 cardstock. So I have a piece of 12 by 12 here. Your first cut is going to be at the three and one fourth line. So you are, okay, I'm going to make sure I'm in frame here for you and get these directions down really good for you. Okay, so I'm at the three and one fourth mark. 
and I'm going to cut a strip that is 12 inches by three and one fourth inches, okay? Then you're gonna do that one more time. You can get two of these um, pouches out of one sheet of 12 by 12 paper. So that's another way to use up some of that 12 by 12 paper you have in your stock, stock in your stash. I'm talking a lot, I'm talking chop top. Um, so you have two sheets that are three and one fourth wide by 12 inches long. Then you're going to, you're gonna leave one alone and then one of them you're going to cut at three inches. So you're gonna turn it on its 12 inch side and you're going to line it up at the three inch mark. This piece is going to be that front pocket. So if you have a different color or um, a different pattern or something on your paper, you might want to cut this out of um, for that pocket just so that you'll have a little difference in the regular pouch and then the pocket that you layer on top of it. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna use this red um, with this other little swirl on it. I'm gonna use that as my um, pocket to go on this one. All right, and then you will need, out of that same little strip you just cut the pocket out of right there, you will need um, a one and a half inch by three and seven eighth inch. So you'll need two of those. That is gonna be your little gusset expansion on both sides. So let's go to the three and seven eighths. There's my three and seven eighths right there. So I'm gonna cut there. And then I'm gonna come over, turn it around. So see, I cut it, sorry, I was out of frame. I cut at the three and seven eighths. Then I'm gonna turn it around and I'm going to cut it at the one and a half and then push this sheet over and cut it at one and a half. All right, so for each pouch, you will need four pieces. So these are your expanders, this is your pocket, and this is the base of your pouch. Okay, then you're gonna get whatever scoring tool you use, you're gonna get that out. You're gonna figure out what you want as your top flap. I want this as my top flap. So it's gonna go this way. So whatever you want at the top goes to your right, okay? Now, I'm gonna put stuff back that I dumped out. Now you are going to score this at one and three-fourths. Whoop, I almost did it, didn't I? All right, one and three-fourths is there. So I'm going to score there. One and three-fourths, and then you're gonna to go to five and three-fourths. Okay, then you are going to go to 10 and 3 eighths, if you have eighth inch score lines there. I don't, so I will show you um, what you need to go to to get that accomplished. I'm gonna go on to the 10 and 1 half, so you need this whether you have the eighth inch um, line or not. So you're gonna be scoring at 10 and 3 eighths and then 10 and a half. So I'm gonna go to the 10 and a half, okay? And then, this is just gonna give you that top little gusset, little bit of room here. That's all this is. You're just needing that little eighth of an inch. Okay, so I did the 10 and a half. Then I'm going to come over to where my seven inch 
is on my score pal so if you have this brand of scoring platform you're going to have the same thing and right here i have an eighth of an inch line okay so i'm going to come over to this seven and a fourth and line that up just like i was going to do it here and then right beside it i'm going to give it another one so you're just doing a um, score line an eighth of an inch away from that um, 10 and a half inch line. Okay, so you're just giving yourself just a little bit of a gusset at the top and it's not anything major. I don't think if you even, um, if you left it out, I don't think you're gonna have any problem even if you left it out. So no problem either way. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna score at that top, those two little eighth inch um, gusset lines. You're gonna score that, and then you're gonna score, fold up on that other score line, and then you're gonna fold this one back. Okay, so you've got there, there, there. Okay, I am thinking that I want to pull this down even more. So see, you don't even have to score this top one if you don't want to, and I'll show you when I do the cardstock one where um, you don't even have to score it if you don't want to at the very top because you can just make it as far down as you want it to go. And see, I like that better. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna come down about an eighth of an inch more and do another little fold and get me a gusset there at the top and then come back up to that one. So you can make your own gusset without even scoring it if you want to. All right, so there is our base. We have laid it out. We have scored it at one and three fourths, we've scored it at five and three fourths, we've scored it at 10 and a half, and then we've given ourselves back behind that 10 and a half this way, we've given ourselves another little eighth of an inch score line, and we have folded this one toward us, we have folded this one on itself, and then we've folded this one down. And that's our base. So now you want to figure out, do you want to um, round your corners on the two flaps? And I do, I like how that looks. I like the finished look of it. Okay, so there are our two flaps with the corners rounded. Then you are going to go ahead while you've got your score pal handy scoring tool whatever you're going to use here's our pocket that's going to go on that all you're going to do is figure out which side you want as your top okay and you're going to do a fourth inch score line on the three sides that are not the top so your sides and your bottom of your pocket piece this is the three and one fourths by three inch piece. You're gonna score at the quarter inch line on all of the sides except the top. Then if you want to make a notch, you can certainly do that. That is not a requirement, but it does help when you are putting things in and out of the pocket. So you're gonna fold over on your score lines, all three, no score line on top because that wouldn't make it a pocket, now would it? Okay, and then you're gonna fold that back out and just like you would do any other pocket to get that um, bulge piece out of the side, you're just gonna come in where that little square is in the corner, and you're gonna come up at an angle a little bit, and then go right on that line to take out that little square, just so you're getting that bulk out of the pocket. 
so it will kind of lay flush on your item. So see, I've made that as my top. When I put it down, it's going to lie flat on there. Okay, now I'm going to ink everything after I get my expander pieces scored. So now with these, you've got, I've got green on both sides, so it doesn't matter. I will show you if you are doing paper that is, has a different color or something on it, <clears throat> I will show you how um, you can get the correct color showing on the outside edges like that, okay? So, we're going to score this little piece. This is your one and a half by three and seven eighths piece, okay? So, you're going to score it at the three eighths inch mark, so three eighths, and then you're going to score it at the three-fourths inch mark. And then you're gonna score it at the one and an eighth inch mark, which I do not have. It would be here, and I don't have that. So all I'm gonna do is turn it around and score again at the three-eighth inch mark. So three eighths and then three fourths and then flip it around and do it at the three eighths again. And then that's going to give you your three different score lines right down the middle. And all you will do is fold over on that first one, fold out on the next one, and fold over on that one. And you're going to make yourself a little accordion. That's all you're doing with that. Okay, so I'll show you one more time on this one. Remember, I do not have a one and an eighth inch score line. So I have to do three eighths. Whoop, my paper moved. Three eighths. And then I have to do, <clears throat> excuse me. I have to do three fourths of an inch. And then I flip it around and I do three eighths again to get those three even score lines right down the middle. And then I'm going to fold the first score line over toward me, and then I'm gonna fold up on the middle score line, and then I'm going to score, fold up again on that other score line. So then you have this accordion, you have a heel in the middle, two valleys. If you flip it over, you have a valley and two heels, okay? So just make sure on one side of these, you have one heel. Find that heel, you got two heels for each piece, you're good. All right, you can put your scoring tool away for the moment. And then I am going to ink all of my edges. I'm using a uh, vintage photo. Now on this one, I use vintage photo on those other ones. On this one, I might want to use a walnut stain just because it's a darker brown. Let's do that. Let's see how, oh yeah, that shows up a lot better. Okay, so I'm using walnut stain. I'm just going to ink all of my edges. I'm going to go around all the edges. Then I'm also going to ink my folds to give it that dimension up here at, at the top, that little gusset, that little one eighth inch gusset. Look at that. It looks really good when you ink it. And then I'm going to ink these folds and then I'm gonna turn these fold, this one, I'm gonna turn it the opposite way and I'm going to ink all of those folds too so that when you fold this down, you can see the ink on that fold. You fold it up, you can see the ink on that fold. So all of my folds are gonna get inked, and then all of my sides, front and back, are gonna get inked. All right, so all of my edges and folds are inked, and I want to put on my pocket first. So I'm gonna ink my pocket and ink the notch ink those fold lines 
put my pocket on first because if you put on the expanders first, then you're going to get some resistance when you try to put that pocket down off the corners here. So it's easier to put the pocket down first. All right, and I'm just gonna use some liquid glue. This is Barely Arts in a Sugar Bell bottle. We carry all of that in the shop. I'm just gonna put a line of glue on all of these little fold over pieces. And then I'm gonna get some glue on my base too while I'm at it, you know, for good measure. And then I'm going to put my pocket wherever I want it. Now there is no specific place um, to put it. There's no measurement to it. You just kind of eyeball it and put it down. Um, if you want it to rest at a certain area, when you turn your flap down, that's totally up to you. Put it however you would like it. I'm gonna get my handy dandy yucky rag and get off my excess. There. Okay, so there's my little pocket on the front under the second flap. Okay, now we're gonna work on putting our expanders on. So you're folding it all the way out, and on this back side where that uh, front flap is resting, this is where your expanders are gonna go on, okay? And you want, I have found that if you will put your raw ends, your free ends toward the outside, it helps you a little bit better to get these um, in place. So your free edges, your one heel of your accordion piece expander right here, that one heel that's in the middle is gonna face outward. So you're gonna put glue on that one side. Make sure your one heel is facing outward and you're going to line it up and go pretty much to the bottom where that fold is, but of course not all the way to the fold or you're gonna get resistance when you go back. So you're leaving yourself just like an eighth of an inch. Little tiny, tiny, tiny space there. And you're just holding that down and making sure that it is in place and right up to the edge, okay? And then you're gonna do the same thing over here. You're gonna make sure your one heel is facing out this way. You're gonna put glue on it. And then you're gonna go right up to the edge and leave that little bitty space there at the bottom before your fold comes up, okay? This one is wanting to come over just a little bit, so you might need to wiggle it around just a touch to get it set the way you need it. See, it's wanting to come over, so I'm going to pull it on over to the edge and then press it down again. Okay, so there are our... our our expanders glued to the back of our base. So there's the back of our base there, okay? Then you're going to put glue on your top strip pieces. All right, gonna kinda hold down on the bottoms and you're gonna flip it up and then you're gonna set those edges how they need to be. If you look inside and they're not all the way to the edge, which mine are, thank you, thank you for playing along. <laughs> but if they're not all the way to the edge, you can scoot them in however you need to. I'm gonna fold that back so you can see, and I'm just holding down, pressing really good to make sure it's adhered all the way down. Okay, so there is your heel, your one heel 
is pointing out on both sides. You can even go in and ink that heel if you want to, to give it some dimension. Looks really good when you do that, especially on the lighter paper and cardstock. There's that heel inked. Your expanders are in. Look at that. A pretty little expander pouch with a double flap and a pocket on the front. Now, you want to go ahead and if you want to decorate the back of your flaps, you can. Um, I think I might just put some um, dictionary page on the back of this one before I set my eyelet. So let's do, I like that. So let's just use that and tear and then tear here and come across, see if that's too much. If it is, I can take off some of this top. Yep, I like that. So let's use that there. I'm going to get my little handy dandy straight edge and put a little walnut stain on the edge of this delicate thin dictionary page. Okay. And then I'm going to put some glue on the back here. and put that down on my back top flap. Just for, for <laughs> just for some extra decoration. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. But then when you flip it up, you've got that looking at you there. And then you can put your tickets or tags or whatever you would like on the inside there. You can decorate this one also. Um, if you wanted to put a little label, that's cute, that little woodland label. This is a Tracy Fox digital. Do this little label here on there. You could decorate these up any way you would like. Now, you don't want to put too much layering and dimension um, just because you want them to be pretty flat as far as going in your journals and stuff. So if you start making too many clusters and layers and things, you are not going to um, get a flush pocket. So you just kind of Put something down, lay down that way, and make sure it is where you want it. I think I want this down just a little bit, so you can see a little bit more of that. And then that way, that helps you to get it straight also, or as straight as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so now we need to put on our um, eyelet. Yep. I'm going to use the craft cardstock and I'm going to use my one inch circle punch. I'm going to do two of those. And then I'm going to use my five eighths inch and do one of those. So this is how I do my eyelets when I'm going to put some thread behind it. If you have another method by all means, use it. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of other YouTubers that have um, better ways of setting an eyelet. Um, but I have had some questions about how I set my eyelet, so I was going to go over um, that a little bit with you. So I'm just doing the two one-inch circles together, and then I'm putting that little five-eighth-inch circle in the middle back, just to give it a little bit of dimension to kind of pop up from the paper. And then I'm gonna ink the edges. And I use, and I have found that these are the easiest ones to use. I use the We Are Memory Keepers. 
the big jumbo looking um, eyelets. I use those on pretty much everything because they're the easiest for me to use. Now, I'm looking here at what I want to use. I don't want the dark um, just because I want it to show up some. So I'm thinking, oh yeah, look at that copper one. That one's pretty. So we do have the We Are Memory Keepers uh, jumbo eyelets in the shop. We do have the crocodiles in the shop. So um, if you will go to www.scrapbookingwithme.com, you will find crocodiles there. You will find, uh, I think, four different um, theme packs of these eyelets. We have warm metal, cool metal, grays, and browns in the shop. Wow, I can't believe I remembered all that. <laughs> now, your little 5 8 inch circle that's on the back, that's going to go on the back. Um, I'm going to make a little pencil mark where my center is, or about where my center is, just so that I can try to get it as close as possible. Um, on that one, you will see I'm not in the center. On the other one, I'm not in the center either. Okay, so I'm using the large circle, the large hole for this project, and I'm gonna go where my pencil mark is. See, that's still not in the middle, but it's almost there. All right, so large hole punch on your crocodile, and then you're gonna put your eyelet in the middle of it. So you've got the base sticking out on the back side. Then what I do about where I want it to be located. Um, I have tried many, many different ways and many things that people have suggested. And the way that works best for me is I find my center where I want it. I'm just pushing it pretty hard into that. So now I have a little circle impression there. I'm gonna get that same large circle punch out that's on my crocodile, and I'm gonna line that up with where I press that eyelet into my flap, okay? And then I'm gonna get my three circles that are glued together, inked on top with my eyelet on top of that and go through that circle, that hole, so now you have your base on the back side of your flap. Then you're going to get your crocodile. If you are using these jumbo eyelets from We Are Memory Keepers, I use the, okay, you have a base. Here's the base of your crocodile. And then here is the top. And you can see on the crocodile, it shows the top of a brad or an eyelet or whatever. It shows the top of that eyelet. And then this says base. So you know your base is always gonna go here. The top of your eyelet is always gonna go where the little nub is sticking out. So there are two different nubs. There is a A and there is a C. I always use A. I have never had, um, reason to use C. It's just a tinier nub. So A is a little bit bigger. C is tiny, tiny, tiny little nub. I don't need that one. I've never had a reason to use that one. So I always leave it on the larger nub on top. Okay. And then, um, the only time I would move this is to go to D or B. And D and B are for eyelets that do not have a hole in the middle. That's what those are for, because there's no nub to go into the middle hole. So you use those for eyelets that do not have a middle hole on them. Okay, and then on the base, I pretty much always use the, let's see if I can find, see the name or the number or whatever. It's the four, the number four base. It's got a little bit of a point nub on it. 
<clears throat> and that is the base that I pretty much always use. And it works great with the We Are Memory Keepers Jumbo Eyelets. Now watch, it will make a liar out of me. But remember, your base is on the bottom, so the base is gonna go on the bottom of your eyelet. You're gonna get that little nub into the middle of your eyelet. And when you have it in the middle of your eyelet, it's gonna automatically be on the base. I have found that. So then you're just gonna press. Yep. Those are the easiest eyelets I have ever worked with and that set really, really well. I'm not real good with a tiny little eyelets like these. I have never been good with these. I have too, I give too much pressure and then I break them or I break the back or I bend them too, too, yeah. So I always like these jumbo ones. Now with string for this, I'm just using like embroidery. I guess this is, I don't know what kind of string this is. It's just thread, string, whatever. Um, you can use baker's twine, um, whatever kind of string that you want to use. I'm going to go with this brown hemp. It is kind of stiff, but it'll still work just because the white is not going to go with this too well. I need to get me some that's, um, some of that string like this, this yarn thread, that's a craft color. I need to get some of that. Um, so you are going to come up from the bottom and you're going to make a knot back behind those circles. And then you're going to make another knot. So double knot it back behind your circles. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> And then you're gonna come up while it's still on the roll, come up and around, and then up and around again. And just figure out how you want it. There's no real rule to this. And then I think I'm just gonna go around twice. I'm gonna pull this a little tighter because that hemp is a little stiff. Okay, and then I'm going to come around my circle, and then I'm going to cut it off there. And what I'm going to do to try to soften this up just a little bit so it'll hold a little better, is I'm going to wad it up. I'm just showing y'all what works for me, y'all. <laughs> y'all and y'all. Okay, I'm going to wad that up while I'm wadding. You're going to come in and you're going to clip off your little tail that's coming out from behind your circles there, your eyelet. Okay, just widen this up and kind of rolling it around to get it a little um, more pliable. Oh, that really worked. I like that. I like it a lot better that way. All right, and then up around and up and around and then around your circle so there's your little closure for that one so there are three done of course I did the one uh, did the two off camera now I want to show you real quick how you can take care of directional papers when you're using that and you know you got to fold down you're gonna have um, wording or images or something upside down so there are those here is one i've already got it cut i just need to score it so if anybody needs another visual on scoring i will show you that so we're going to the one and three fourths and then we're going to five and three fourths okay and then ten and a half and then I need one eighth of an inch back from ten and a half so there is our ten and a half and then I'm going to do just an eighth of an inch there beside it just to give me that tiny little gusset okay and then I'm going to go 
uh, three eighths and then three fourths and then flip it around and do three eighths again. Okay, same thing on this one. Three eighths, three fourths and then flip it around and three eighths again. If you have any questions on um, this, feel free to leave a comment. If I went too fast on something and you didn't um, see exactly how I did it, just leave me a comment and I'll try my best to um, answer those for you. Okay, real quick like, I'm gonna put this one together and then I will show you um, how I covered up that directional paper. Okay, so I've got my corners rounded. I've got my distressing done. Um, now I go to assemble it, and of course all of this is upside down. So I've done it upside down, oh no. And now I need to cover that up because it's upside down. And I need to cover this up because it's upside down. Well, is that really upside down? Would I really hate that if that showed? Nope, I like that. So I'm just gonna leave that like that. Even though it does look a little upside down, I'm good with that. The only thing I'm really wanting to cover up is this hotel part. So I'm just gonna get a little strip of the paper that goes along with it. And I'm just going to go right along this. And I'm just gonna cover up what I don't like. So there we go there. I'm gonna ink these edges. I'm gonna go ahead and ink this since I'm leaving it alone. I'm gonna ink up to there since I'm not gonna cover that up. But if you wanted to cover this up, if you couldn't stand that, that it was upside down, you're just gonna put a piece of um, paper, uh, cardstock, whatever you would like, like this craft goes really well with that. I will cover this flap up with that one. And I'm just gonna put some, I started to say ink, I'm putting some glue on the back side of this one. And, whoop, I'm gonna get that where I want it there. And it helps that there's a line right there, so that lines me up really well. There and there. Okay, so I've got that little strip there. So I like how that peeks out. Okay, so now I just need to cover up this and I'm gonna use this craft cardstock and I'm just going to, before I assemble everything, I went ahead and put it on my pocket, but before I assemble everything, I'm going to line this up where it's on the back side of that fold so it doesn't go over the top of the fold. Okay, I'm just gonna line it up. And I'm going to trim around all the edges to cover that up. So here we go. And if you don't want to just cut freehand, of course you can trace this. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a frog in my throat. Trace it and um, cut it out without holding on to this. But I mean, I just find that it's just as easy to do it like this. There we go. Got that edge off. And I'm gonna ink this little new flap here that we're putting on the upside down wording. Isn't that pretty? I've got some more of this paper, so I will use that on something else, but I needed the roses for a project, so that's why I'm using that side, but I have three more sheets of this and I'm gonna cut that 
out there and use that <clears throat> as a card in one of my journals. That's so pretty. All right, back to what I was doing. Okay, covering up the upside down wording. Then you'll flip it over and see if you need any trimming at all. And I, it doesn't look like I need it, so I'm good with that. All right, and there is how I cover up any of my um, upside down stuff that I don't, I can't live with. Um, if this would have been upside down um, too much that I couldn't handle it, I would have just brought up a little bit thicker of a piece. Now I'm just gonna ink my heels on my expanders, accordion expanders. And I'm gonna get those put on here. And then other than decorating a little bit and putting on my eyelet, this one will be done too. But I just wanted to show you, since I've already went through one um, all the way and showed you how to how I decorated it and uh, put on the eyelet. I was just going to show you on this one how I cover up the upside down stuff when you're using directional paper. So you would just need one on the top flap, the inside, just a little bit under that, and then that second flap. And then the rest of it's all covered up on the inside of the pouch. Okay, those down, and then glue here, and there, and just holding down toward the bottom, and flipping up, and with the cardstock, sometimes it likes to waver on where it sits, so you just have to watch that a little bit. And, I mean, if you didn't want to, you wouldn't even have to put in an eyelet on these. You could just make um, a belly band this way. That would be cute to do a belly band and not even have to do the eyelet. Especially if, you know, if you don't have an eyelet setter or eyelets, um, you know, you can come up with ways on how to do these without using the exact stuff that we use. And um, we try to whenever... Um, we're making something and, you know, if you don't have the item or we don't have it in stock, to try to tell you maybe an Amazon link where you could get it if you wanted to. But there's always ways to improvise on making these. And this one, um, you could just tie a string around it or you could tie a piece of lace around it. You wouldn't even have to um, make an eyelet on it if you didn't want to. You could just tie it up with some pretty lace and not even worry about the eyelet if you didn't want to. Okay, so just come up here, tie at the top, make your little bow, come across the top. That's the way I get my bows to work correctly is to come across the top. Look at that, how that bow turned out. Pretty. And see, you could do it just like that. And make your little bow at the top. I think I might even like that a little bit better than these. So don't even have to use an eyelet, the uh, crocodile all of that stuff, you could just tie you a nice little lace bow at the top and you're ready to go. Decorate it up just a little bit if you wanted to or not, however you wanted to do it. I think these turned out so cute. I thank you so much for watching. Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a comment down below and I will try my best to answer those. Um, I will try to leave links to things that I have used today in the description box below. So make sure to expand that description box and get that information. Y'all have a great day and I will see you in the next video. God bless. Bye y'all.